All right, so I'm going to make some handles here. Uh, I've got some clay that I uh, pulled out of a box and I've shaped into kind of a carrot shape or a spike or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to slam this here on the table uh, to get the edges compressed a little bit. To pull handles, you're going to want to have some space. I would recommend having a towel handy, maybe a knife, and uh, some water. And I actually sometimes pull these over by the sink uh, so that I can use the standing water in the sink uh, to make them. You want to use box clay, and the reason for using box clay is it's aged a little bit. If you've got other clay around the studio that's been uh, wedged real well or pugged and it's been sitting around for quite a while, it should probably be okay. But I wouldn't use freshly recycled clay um, that's a little bit shorter. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, pull this clay, essentially squeeze it while moving your hands, and the process is meant to mimic what you do when you're on the potter's wheel, where you're squeezing the clay while it moves and your hands are wet so they're not sticking. So I'm going to hold on to the top of this little carrot deal here, and I'm going to get my hands nice and wet, and I'm going to pull my hands <coughs> down the side of the clay, or down the, the surface of the clay. I'm squeezing with my thumb and finger as I come down, and every once in a while I can drag my finger and thumb along the, the edges. Or I can wrap my hand all the way around this clay. And you'll notice as I start to do this, I start going fairly quickly, um, and that's from practice. I've done a bunch of these. Uh, but when you're starting out, you want to make sure that you're careful about your pressure. You want to have basically continuous pressure. You are squeezing the clay while moving your hand. You're not actually pulling on the clay. You are stronger than this clay. If you pull on the clay, you will have two pieces of clay. And so make sure that you're gentle with your pressure. Um, I'm also trying to have it stay a little bit thicker up here, a little bit thinner down here. And uh, that I can control with pressure as well. You can start from a shorter piece and make a little bit longer, but I, you, you need to know the size of the handle you're going to make. If you're going to make a, a mug handle, the amount of clay I've got here is fine. If you're going to make a pitcher handle, you're going to want more clay to begin with because you, uh, you, know, you can't make more than, than what you've got here. So I've been pulling on this piece of clay, and I've got it nice and even, uh, nice and, and uh, thinned out. The strap thickness on the side is about the thickness of the uh, mug that I'm going to attach it to. The strap thickness this way, that's a little bit more up to you. You want to think about who's holding this, the size of their hands. Remember, clay's going to shrink a little bit. Um, but you also don't want to have it so wide that it kind of stretches out your hand and, and feels kind of funny in your hand. Make sure you're dragging your fingers along the side every once in a while. And I keep flipping directions because if I, as a righty, keep pulling in one direction, I end up with a bit of a twist. And so flipping it helps me get rid of that angle, that handedness that, that ends up happening. Also, fairly normal is you get a little bit of thickness down here at the bottom. You don't have to do that, but it often happens. Um, and that's just because it, you didn't continue the pull all the way to the very bottom. You, you sort of let up before you got there. If you're getting that thickness happening, you can simply pinch it off and, and discard that stuff. So when you are done, uh, let me get these out of, my, out of my way on the camera. When you are done pulling this out, it's the length that you need it to be, and you can kind of test that by by thinking about, okay, if I attach this on a handle, will, do, oops, does it leave me enough room? If I bend it, does it leave me enough space? Oops. When you're done pulling that, you can set it up on your board like this. And notice how I'm having it recurve on me. I'm later going to attach it to the handle about there and about, or to the, the mug, about there and about there. And so I'll cut away some of this extra clay uh, when I go to attach it, once it's stiffened up a bit. I don't really want to attach it right now because the more I touch it, the more I leave little fingerprints on that wet surface. The other thing I highly recommend is that you pull yourself a bunch of handles. You need to have, um, if, you're, if you're making maybe five mugs, I would recommend you pull ten handles. That way, if one of them, while these are sitting up, if one of them dries too much, one of them falls over, one of them gets knocked, you cut one wrong, you've still got enough to work with. That also means that you can pull out your best hand, I mean, uh, use your best handles uh, on the mugs you're making. Now, I just wanted to show you as a comparison this clay that I started pulling. This is recy recently recycled clay. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but 
Um, there's little cracks starting to happen on the surface. You know, I could probably get away with them, but they work. They mess up the integrity of the the pot and they or of the handle, and they're gonna. They're happening on both sides, and they're just because that clay is a little bit shorter, and so this is not as strong a handle, both visually and physically, as one that's made with recycled clay. So I tend to pull these strap handles. That's what these guys are called. Look like you know straps of leather or straps of clay. Um, and there are some variations on how people pull handles. Um, some people don't start out with quite as long of a piece as I do. Um, and I highly recommend if you, if you are looking for other ways of pulling handle, go ahead and look at other videos online. Plenty will show up, probably some will show up um, as recommended after this video. Uh, but uh, there are some variations you can play around with and uh, those are completely valid as long as we're we're getting it wet and making this surface mimic the kind of surface that we're making on the throne mugs. Some people put things like coil handles on a throne mug and my problem with that is the, the uh, feel, the comfort, and the look is fairly different from what we're doing in here. Another thing that people sometimes do is they actually attach this handle to the side of the table. Um, and so they, they hang it down. I've, I've got my table too low here, but they attach it on the handle and they or on the table and they just let it hang down like this. Um, I guess I can do that right over here. Attach it like that and let it hang down. And that's a perfectly fine way to set them up. Uh, you just want to make sure nobody's walking around um, near there. There's another slight variation on this handle, and that is called a dog bone handle. And I am going to, I've shaped this piece of clay into sort of a dog bone shape, a little bow tie shape. Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to pull this in a similar way, but trying to account for the fact that I'm leaving some thickness at the bottom. Now, this is not a way I do handles often, um, and so I'm not going to claim to be an expert on it. But if you like this kind of handle that gets fatter at either end, uh, I'm going to recommend that you look for some videos on maybe uh, Ceramic Arts Daily or something like that. You can look up dog bone handle. Martha Grover is the person that I'm familiar with who does these real well. And so you can see videos or recommendations on what she does. Um, because they are, they are an attractive kind of handle, the way they kind of get uh, thicker at either end. Here we go. Um, and uh, kind of a comfortable little shape. So lots of options to play with, and uh, just try some of these out. Uh, when you first start to pull handles, you will make mistakes. Make more handles. When you rip through one, set it aside, no worries. Just like with learning to throw, learning to pull handles takes some practice. And so your first five are not gonna be perfect. In fact, your first five may not survive. Um, so get yourself a bunch of clay and some time to pull these handles. And probably after you've done 10 or 20, you're gonna start feeling more comfortable with them. Um, as you're pulling, if you're running into trouble, think about how much pressure you're, you've got. Are you actually pulling on the clay or are you letting your hands slide? Do you have enough water? If you are starting to stick, your hand, the, the clay is going to stick to your hand rather than letting your hands slide through. Are you starting to get cracks? Double check whether you're using uh, recycled or, or aged clay, boxed clay in this studio. Um, one other thing I, I recommend you uh, pay attention to is when you cut these pieces off of a, a chunk of clay, I would, uh, I would shape your carrot out of one piece. Don't piece a bunch of, uh, don't take bits and pieces, particularly if you've already pulled them. Don't take bits and pieces and try to stick them together and then pull the handle. <laughs>